locks and LH2 fill and drain valves are closed. Payload bay vent doors are being positioned. Standing by for the handoff to Columbia's onboard computers. And the handoff has occurred. Columbia's computers now in control. 25 seconds. 20 seconds. Firing chain is armed. Pound suppression water system is activated. T minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven. Go from eight engine start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia on a mission expanding our knowledge and understanding of the human nervous system. Roger. Roll, Columbia. Columbia into the roll, placing the shuttle in a heads down wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Twenty five seconds into the flight. Columbia one mile in altitude, two miles downrange. At the 45 second mark, Columbia's three liquid fuel main engines now throttle back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance that will dampen the stress on the shuttle's zero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier. Three engines now beginning to throttle back up to 104% of rated performance, standing by for the throttle up call. Columbia, you are go and throttle up. Go and throttle up. The throttle up call from spacecraft communicator Ken Rominger acknowledged on board Columbia by Commander Rick Searfoss. He is joined on the flight deck by pilot Scott Altman, flight engineer Kay Heyer, and mission specialist Dave Williams. Down on the mid deck are payload commander Rick Linehan along with payload specialists Jay Bucky and Jim Powalczyk. One minute, 40 seconds into the flight, Columbia already 15 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 18 miles in altitude, traveling at 2,300 miles per hour. 15 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation, followed 10 seconds later by the ignition of Columbia's orbital maneuvering system engines. Booster officer reports a good solid rocket booster separation. 